Hey YouTube, Shukun Shobi here with a review of the Power Rangers Megaforce Armored Might Wave 2 figures featuring Robo Knight and the Mighty Morphin White Ranger. So, uh, yeah, these are continuations from the Armored Might line. The first in the series was the Ultra Modes for Red and Blue. The second wave, this is actually wave 3, I guess kind of wave 1.5 kind of deal, was uh, the Mighty Morphin Red Ranger. And now for Wave 2 slash Wave 3 slash whatever you want to call it, we have Robo Knight and the MMPR White Ranger. These retail for about $16.99. I picked these up at Target. So, hooray. Uh, these have also been spotted at Toys R Us, but my Toys R Us is in the area. I never got them. So, so yeah. before we get uh, going, we'll take a look at the power cards. Robo Knight comes with promo 100. Robo Knight, obviously, while the White Ranger comes with the White Mighty Morphin Ranger, promo 164. Megaforce, Robo Knight. Well, I'll be. Mighty Morphin, White. That's actually a new sound for these reviews. Hooray! And of course, since I can now, let's go ahead and take a look at the card scanner app. I get earth power. That was actually pretty neat. So let's go ahead and start with Robo Knight, just because he's Robo Knight and I really dig him. Um, just a quick word of stuff. Uh, yeah, these uh, armor can attach to the normal Megaforce Rangers or Mighty Morphin, whatever. Uh, so the armor is all interchangeable with each other since they all use the same exact base body. So um, this can fit on uh, Megaforce Red. Which is actually kind of cool. I've seen someone on Ranger Board do it. Uh, it could also fit on the White Ranger over here if we wanted to. But uh, let's just kind of keep it real for now. Uh, just kind of take that apart. It does fit together. There's a lot of pegs and stuff on here to make kind of a quasi-Lion Zord sort of looking thing. Which is kind of neat. A nice way to store the armor if you're not attaching it to the figure. Uh, speaking of, here is Robo Knight. Uh, again, these are about a 7-inch scale figure, so they're not going to fit with most other Power Ranger toys. But uh, absolutely superb figure for the most part. The muscles are incredibly irritating, but thankfully both of these guys have very big chest armor, and it covers a lot of that up, so it's actually not too bad on these guys. So if you can ignore the bulky legs, then uh, you actually got some pretty nice figures here. So attach that, um, the hand armor, if you can call it that, is actually a little bit of a pain because you have to pop off the hand and then slide this over there and then slide it back on. And real quick, uh, also there are separate hands uh, that come with them, a pair of kind of relaxed hands. Uh, this one, however, can hold the... Uh, Robomorpher. So that just kind of pegs in like that. So it can hold the Robomorpher, which is kind of cool. Otherwise, it just kind of hangs out here on his belt. The shoulder armor just kind of plugs in up here through friction. There's no actual holes. And uh, getting it in the right spot can be a little bit irritating. I've done this enough, so it's just kind of an instant thing for me now. But um, right off the bat, it is a little bit uh, difficult. And with this uh, wrist armor, ideally, it's supposed to kind of go like this. But then he loses his elbow articulation, so you kind of have to finagle it a little bit and make it not look right. But uh, there we go. And then last but not least, we have his leg armor.
which just snaps right over the boot right there. And uh, there you go. There is Robo Knight. And I really, really like this figure. Um, it's probably not as good as the SH Figure Arts release of Gosei Knight. Um, whether we get him over here or not, I have no idea. But um, it's it's a fairly nice representation of Robo Knight and probably one of the best ones that we have. Because not only is it a fairly nice scale that looks great on the display, it's fairly accurate too. Like I said, the only thing very off-putting is the muscular legs down here since he's a robot. But um, the rest of the armor is bulky enough to where it doesn't really catch the eye as much as on some other figures. Um, articulation is still completely top-notch, ball joint up there. Full rotation, it can get hit on that little uh, stub right there. Uh, the only thing off-putting I think about it is the pegs and holes for the Lion Zord combination for the armor. Uh, I could have easily did it without that to make a more streamlined figure, but it's still a pretty neat little feature, even if it does kind of end up hindering the, the toy a little bit. But yeah, uh, articulation's pretty good. Could really benefit from a ankle tilt, but... Not a huge deal. And he does come with the Robo Laser and the Robo Sword. Same weapon, but uh, both combinations for these. So he can hold whatever you want him to. So Robo Knight, actually pretty spot on. Now that leaves us with the Mighty Morphin White Ranger. And like the Super Legends release, they decided to uh, G-Ranger this Die Ranger up with uh, the chest emblems and the uh, designs right here. Now the Super Legends one didn't have removable cuffs, so obviously didn't have this. But basically this is Sansa's belt full on what Kiba Ranger would look like if he was in G-Ranger. Which is actually kind of cool to see. Um, and it makes me realize that a white version of the G-Ranger suits looks absolutely hideous. But uh, just way too much white. But anyway, uh, it's a pretty interesting thing for them to do, given the fact that uh, MMPR was very G-Ranger based, and then we got the Die Ranger guy over here. Uh, so it's kind of a cool what if to kind of blend the suit into the MMPR lore a little bit better. Even though it's not screen accurate, since the suit on the screen was the one from Die Ranger, and obviously had none of this uh, when he didn't have his armor. But, um, yeah, these do come off. Um, it was just a pain because you have to remove, like, this entire section to get it on there, and I didn't feel like taking it off. So those do come off, but for the sake of things, we'll just keep them on for now. Uh, but, again, same base body that we all know with these, so nothing really new there. But uh, the head sculpt is really nice for Kiba Ranger slash White Ranger. So, obviously, his iconic armor just snaps right over his chest up here. It does limit the arm articulation a little bit because now he can't go down as far with the arms, but not a big deal. And like I said, the chest armor is very bulky, so it covers up a lot of that ugly muscle mass thing that they had going on. So it looks a little bit more streamlined now. Now here comes the uh, hard part that's kind of annoying, is getting the cuffs on. Now the leg cuffs actually aren't that big of a deal. It does not matter which uh, side you put them on, if I remember correctly. Those just fit right on there. Uh, judging by the top, they might actually have certain sides, but they're not marked. So, I don't really know. But those just plug right over this top boot portion. So now he's got those boot diamonds covered up. And then just like Robo Knight's armor, uh, you're going to pop off the arm. And this will slide right up in there. Not as comfortably. And some of that gold will be shown. But that's probably about the best that you're going to do. You can warm the plastic and probably get it up a little bit further. But for the sake of things, we'll just leave it how it is. And now the wrists are covered up too. Uh, I'd much rather have it had just be a clip like these ones down here to remove that whole hand thing. But what are you going to do? And uh, just like Robo Knight, he has the same relaxed hands with the same hand with the hole in it, even though he doesn't have anything that he can hold like that. I guess he can hold Saba by his, like, 
area, I guess, maybe. Not really. But yes, Saba does pin right in there, right on his hip. Granted, it's no holster, but uh, Saba's actually pretty sculpted well. Pretty sculpted well, sculpted pretty well. There we go. Uh, paint is all right in the blade area and stuff down in his head area, not so much. But uh, still pretty nice looking overall, and it just slides right into his hand. Articulation-wise, you are going to get a little bit of a bum here with with uh, the shoulder pad area, since you can't kind of go up as much. Uh, whereas Robo Knights is stuck onto his shoulder, so it's a still a full rotation. You're not going to get that with uh, with the White Ranger. But again, it's not awful, and it doesn't really hurt the figure any, but uh, you're not going to beat the Super Legends or Figure Arts release with uh, with this guy compared to other releases of the White Ranger. So how do these stand? They're not bad. Uh, they're about the same quality as the other Armored Might figures. A little bit more so than MMPR Red since he had such an issue with his chest armor. But uh, as they stand, this is probably one of the best Robo Knight figures you're going to find on domestic retail. Again, I think the figure art is a better release, but uh, it's also quite a bit more expensive of a release. So for $16.99, if you're a Robo Knight fan, you can't really go wrong with this guy. For the White Ranger, given what's out right now and given the price of the figure art, this isn't a bad pickup if you're a fan of uh, Tommy and his White Ranger incarnation or a fan of Keep Ranger from Die Ranger. Uh, it's not a bad toy by any means, but given the fact that there's a Super Legends release and an upcoming figure arts release, there's just two toys that completely outclass this one. So still not bad pickups if you're ACG card collectors, there's two more promo cards for you. Uh, but again, there's better toys out there for him, but not so much for him. So uh, definitely worth the pickups overall. Uh, your mileage may vary in terms of enjoyment. So thanks for watching, take care and have a great one. Bye.